I think the most challenging part of bringing the show into the future, probably the clothing. Everything else I had a good handle on, but getting a sense for which way fashion blows 30 years in the future was, uh, was definitely a lot of conversations. Yeah, but we got the Transformer dress out of it, which we was did. cool. We did. Yeah. No. Yes, it turns out in the future all clothes transform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, effortlessly. That's a future I can get behind. My name is Jonathan Nolan. I'm the co-creator and showrunner of Westworld on HBO. We're here in our offices in Hollywood, California. Technically, it's my office that we're in. We're here in her office. I think it's testament Hollywood, to my California. superior interior design sense. That's very true. I'm Lisa Joy. I am the co-creator and showrunner of Westworld. One of the things with series that is always a little daunting is when you're looking at the pilot and someone asks you, well, what's episode six? What's season three? And with this, we had a very compelling answer, which is season three is the moment you get to see the outside world and the host gets to see the outside world. If you've trapped the audience in their perspective to that point, then it's delicious experiencing our world from their perspective. The narrative was always intended to be a little more linear. At this point, we're essentially all in, in, in the, the here and now or the here and then. But I think the fun thing for us about the show from the beginning was the idea that there would be an epic scale to the, the lives of the hosts, the, the story of them trying to survive and become a viable rival for humanity here. We've spent so long examining how the hosts could be like humans. And now this season, we really start to look at humans and how when they're in the real world, you know, doing their jobs, going home to their apartments, paying bills. They're a lot like hosts. They live on these small loops and they have narratives that they're following that maybe they aren't fully in charge of. In fact, one of the earliest ideas we had was that you know the, the only way that would be practical would be able to shoot somewhere else for a North American city. And had this kind of eureka moment of, oh, we'll go shoot in a, in a major Asian city and just say it's America. And we thought, that's brilliant. And then we went to the movie theater about two weeks later and watched the Spike Jones film, Her. And Spike had, had the same exact idea. He'd gone and shot Shanghai for Los Angeles. And so we were disappointed that we didn't get to be the uh, the first people to do that, but we were gratified by the, by the idea that it, it really worked. It worked beautifully in that. I thought the uh, transportation, which you're a big nerd about, was pretty fun. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Our approach has always been practical first. We have an incredibly talented vis effects department, but our, our goal is to use them as little as possible. We're creating a flying vehicle, it turns out you'd need to talk to the FAA and a bunch of other people in order to actually, actually build one. Uh, we actually built the autonomous cars that everyone rides around in. The personal air transportation uh, was a lot of fun, but also challenging to figure out exactly how to put that in front of the camera. I'm gonna show this world for what it really is. Welcome to the end of the game. We imagined a future that was quite linear from where we are right now. Imagine that nothing really changes and the trends that we're all seeing play out continue to play out as they have done on a number of different levels in terms of economic equality, in terms of technological equality, in terms of algorithmic determinism and, and the ways in which the world is ever more shaped by license we've given to these machines to kind of direct things. So we're very excited to be able to, to finally talk about our world very directly. The real gods are coming. I remember when I was in law school, one of my professors there said, you know, who cares about privacy, right? He's like, it doesn't matter what we do in the privacy of our own home, so long as, you know, you're not breaking any laws or anything. In the time since I graduated from law school, the answer to that has become very, very apparent, right? It's not just a matter of whether you yourself have something to hide. It's a matter of what you're giving away that you don't understand you're giving away what you're giving away about your acquaintances and your family and your location and, and all, all these little tells that people have and how easily those tells amalgamated can allow for control of both an individual and a culture. It's all facilitated by technologies that are there to make your life easier, but they are listening and all of that data is being aggregated places. And I sound really paranoid right now, I feel like, and that's, 
It's weird because that's normally your role in this. You've been watching me. Not me, but someone, something has. We, even when we started the show, we started making the show in 2013. We kind of always felt this way, although we were surprised at how quickly the honeymoon was over with the big technology, big data. Even the people who were the most paranoid or the most pessimistic about what was gonna go down with big data, did not anticipate it impacting the 2016 elections, did not anticipate the speed with which our world could change. Where we used to imagine that laws would catch up a generation or so later, or, you know, the laws eventually caught up with the robber barons, the rail barons, the oil barons, and we were able to kind of figure out how to steer these things towards the good of the whole. And so it does really feel like there's an arms race right now in this moment to figure out if the AI is gonna get there first or if society is gonna be able to kind of head them off at the pass. Because it really does feel like a lot of our societal values at this point are really at stake. So I think it's been a wake up call in the last couple of years for people looking at these questions. These are no longer the questions of science fiction. These are the questions of the here and now.